It's Monday morning, I'm in London, it's 7 a.m. and I'm headed to Hong Kong. So my watch is taking me to Hong Kong. Now, not exactly, but let me explain a little bit more about what is happening today. So in the UK, when it comes to driving, we're in a bit of a unique position in that we drive on the right-hand side. Now, I know there's other countries out there that do too, but anyway, what this means is when your hands are on the wheel, it just so happens that your wrist with your watch on is the first thing that's in shot when you're filming, because typically we film left to right camera in the corner of the car, filming across the car. It turns out that Audemars Piquet, the guys that make this watch, just so happen to be a subscriber of my channel. <laughs> what, what are the chances? Anyway, they reach out a few weeks ago and simply ask, would I like to accompany them to a trip to Hong Kong for Art Basel? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. So here we are. I'm uh, in Heathrow Airport. I'm in the lounge and it is all thanks to this watch. This is probably the, the better time than any to explain a, a little bit more about this because I've read in the comments lots of, of people are fascinated with it. So it's an Audemars Piquet Royal Oak Offshore Diver. To some people, Audemars Piquet might not mean anything at all. To others, this is a really nice watch. But to me, this is much more than just a watch. Um, so I actually got this on my 30th birthday. The reason being is just I thought, do you know what? 30 is quite a milestone. I had an incredible time in my 20s, but it wasn't until me getting towards the very end of 29 that I started YouTube and I started sharing all of these adventures with you guys. I was at this sort of pivotal stage in my life where I just wanted to mark it and remember where I was at that time in my life upon turning 30. YouTube, I'd just started. Businesses that I'd got going were doing well. I just felt in me that it was gonna be this time in my life when something would shift. And I always wanted to remember that. I just felt the need to, I guess, freeze it in time. And I ended up buying this watch. There's a guy from Audemars PK called Jose. And Jose is the guy who's very kindly invited me out on this trip. And I remember not long after getting this watch and AP, Audemars Piguet, invited me uh, to go and meet them for the very first time. That day, when I was having lunch with them, I banged the watch on the table that I was sat at and I put its first scratch in it. And at the time I was gutted that I'd scratched this brand new pristine watch. And Jose, who was sat across the table from me, said, don't treat scratches as damages in your watch. Treat them as memories of where you were. And that message resonated with me so strongly because the whole reason that I bought the watch in the first place was to remember where I was when I turned 30 and what was changing in my life at that time. These days, I can almost count every single scratch on here and tell you where I was and what I was doing. So when I say my watch took me to Hong Kong, it's literally that Audemars Piquet, after seeing me wear this, they very kindly said, we can see you clearly love your watch. We'd love to uh, treat you to an experience in Hong Kong. Anyway, I have a plane to catch. Love me a good lounge. I'm flying with Cafe Pacific today. Now, airport lounges, always good, but these boys, you can have dim sum while you wait. Check this out. too bad at flying so regardless if I'm an economy or business or first I really don't mind but thankfully 
Audemars Piguet have arranged a business class ticket. Now that's all very cool, but what I really care about is that. That single little plug right there. I could fly around the world twice if I have a plug. And I got one. So we're ready to edit. So I can do plenty of stuff ready that hopefully I can have the majority of this video edited by the time I land, stick on the other half of the day at the end. Bob to your uncle. So at this stage, I anticipate pushing back maybe about five minutes early, and then it will be a one time for the rest of the hours exactly. I'm going to find the cross to do the whole conference. Despite my partying antics that were the Gumball Rally last year, I actually don't drink that much. However, today I'm going to make an exception because they have, on this flight, Betsy beer. Have you tried the world's first beer brewed especially for 35,000 feet? Nope, but I'm going to today. Did you know that your sense of taste changes in the air? Cabin pressure, altitude and noise all add up to a dulled palate. That's why we've been on a mission to create the world's first beer brewed specially for 35,000 feet. Seriously, Betsy beer it is. So yesterday, if you watched my vlog when I was out with Chris in the SLS AMG in London, what you didn't see is that we ate way too much. I mean, I started the day with a beef, burrito, then I went and had a pulled pork beef burger and then that night we had Lebanese takeaway and I had a chicken kebab. Oh and then we finished it off with apple pie and custard. Yeah, anyway, I thought today I was going to be on my healthy eating regime. Turns out Cafe Pacific's in flight dining is like, it's a, ho it's a, it's a restaurant in the air. Check this out. Look at the menu. All of this starters followed by cheese and fruit pralines for starters. Smoked coffee crusted salmon. What? Their idea of a snack on this flight is a burger. <laughs> Cheddar cheeseburger, beetroot relish on a brioche bun. That's a snack, apparently. And Hagadar's ice cream. I am done for. We've got the 35,000 feet Betsy beer all about. So, I don't know, I don't know what the world's first beer brewed for 35,000 feet is supposed to taste like, but up here it tastes good. Okay, so I've got an 11 hour flight, probably only about four hours into it, but of course we are we're flying east, which means daylight just went down in half the time it normally would. And when I get there, there's going to be an eight hour time difference. I'm landing at seven in the morning. So I'm going to take this opportunity, get some shut eye, and I'll see you in Hong Kong. Welcome to Hong Kong. I was just thinking to myself, when was the last time that I went somewhere that I'd never been before? And I don't mean like a different part of Europe, I mean totally not ever been before. As mentioned earlier, it's my first time to Asia. So this is a massive deal. It's so cool. Already I can feel the humidity. Probably a bad move bringing this uh, jacket. Anyway, 11 hour flight. It's now half seven in the morning here which means I have all day to find the wall that I'm inevitably going to hit.
right, made it to the hotel, got a shower, got a change. There's no way that I'm gonna come to a city as renowned as Hong Kong for supercars and not make sure that I dip into the culture. So I've teamed up with Supercars of Hong Kong. You can check out their Instagram profile here, who has incredibly already put me in the right place at the right time. This just so happens to be parked underneath the hotel I'm staying in and also around about there's lots more tasty stuff too, which I'll show you now. But rest assured, towards the end of the week, we're gonna be saturating ourselves in Hong Kong's supercar lifestyle. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.